Welcome in. Wednesday edition. Blue Sky Live here with you this morning. Chase Parmer, Neil McCready, Clark Ford Studio. The uh, Ole Miss Rebels baseball team falls in Memphis last night. FedEx Park, by the way, was the uh, the name of the stadium, not FedEx Field. I think that's in D.C. Isn't that correct? Now that I now that I say that out loud, maybe that uh, that sounds right. Anyway, 9-4 last night. Tigers over the Rebels. Ole Miss has now lost four straight. They gave up a five-run seventh inning. It was tied 4-4 at that point, and as has been the case, just didn't play better baseball than their opponent. It's not more complicated than that, but we will uh, touch on those things a little bit. Uh, Got some stadium expansion news that was not necessarily surprising, but it definitely generated some conversation yesterday. And then uh, just kind of more business of athletics. Uh, Lane Kiffin spoke yesterday yesterday. He uh, he answered the question about how they uh, they handle gambling. Is Ole Miss? I'm sorry, not Ole Miss. Mississippi has taken another step toward that being legal from a mobile site standpoint here soon, and much more. So a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of stuff going on here with you this uh, this morning. Blue skies throughout Mississippi, up and down I-55 throughout North Mississippi as well. Lunch specials, five sixty nine, couple sides bread, any size fountain drink. You know about all the specials going on in Macomb last week. Again, check out the epicenter if you're down in that location. But wherever you are, there's a blue sky close by that can take care of you. A lot of options there with that. And again, coming to you from the Clark Ford studio. We are. Clark Ford is in Amory, Mississippi, 662-257-1900. Call that number. Ask for our friend Corey Clark. Tell Corey what Ford product you're looking for. He'll send you a quote within 15 minutes in business hours. Right to the bottom line. No hassle, no haggle. You get your quote. The rest is up to you. You can shop that quote around. You can do what I've done, what I recommend that you do. And that's hop into a Clark Ford today, 662 662- 257 1900 guests join on the Campbell Clinic hotline. The Campbell Clinic is in Oxford now, 2608 South Lamar Boulevard, Suite 102, just across the street from the cottages at Hooper Hollow. The Campbell Clinic provides full service orthopedic care, everything from sports medicine to foot and ankle surgery to spine and total joint care to pediatric orthopedics, physical therapy, and more. To book an appointment, go to CampbellClinicOxford.com or call 901-759-3111. Walk-ins are always welcome at the Campbell Clinic Monday through Friday, 7.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, I, I clarified. Um, I know people read things quickly, but yes, uh, I, I made a post last night that uh, the team meeting was going for quite a while. Um, by my count at that point, it was a little over 20 minutes that since the game had ended and they'd been out in right or left field or wherever they were in Memphis. And uh, I posted that it was the longest I thought of the season and it was 20 minutes and running. And there was some comprehension there that I was saying he was running the team. But we were, we were, we were not pulling a Herb Brooks last night. Uh, Mike was not run, making them run foul poles following the 9-4 loss to – Lost to the Tigers. That would be a sign of much bigger issues than just... If a college team lines up and starts doing polls after the game, I go, hey... um, Something's wrong. Yeah, not... Coach has lost his mind. Not just a normal loss there, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, just just saying. So, yeah, I don't don't know. Um, It's frustrating to cover right now, if I'm honest, because it's April the 3rd, and it feels so broken record because they're losing in the same way every single time, and you're just repeating and repeating and repeating and repeating, and you're stuck in this kind of this Groundhog Day nature of it. Because, again, it's what happened last night. They had pass balls. They, I mean, Memphis scored two runs on a sack bunt without an error last night. Uh, Don't see that very often. No. I mean, having a hard time even putting that together in my mind they were running and squeeze play Mm -hmm. everybody was moving and just threw to first and two runs scored um because yeah um i mean we we tried that in high school a few times but you in high school you basically cheat because there's only two umpires Mm -hmm. and no one's looking at third base so the runner that's on second he doesn't even go to third base he just starts cutting through the grass and back into the baseline about halfway down other teams losing its damn mind because you've cut off the base by 40 feet. But there's no umpire looking in that direction. Umpire somebody's looking at home, call and somebody's looking at see. first. Run scores, and you probably get thrown at a minute later. But otherwise, you the, the, the run did cross the plate if that was the if that was the goal. But no, look. I would have thrown at them. You would have thrown yeah, at them? Yeah, no question. <laughs> well, you know some high-strung high school coaches probably losing their – 
every bit of their collective mind at that point. Well, and some high strung high school players. Yeah, yeah I mean, fair enough. Yeah. I mean, Ole Miss threw eight pitchers last night. No one threw more than two innings, and Austin Simmons was the only one to throw two innings. I think six gave up runs. Um, I mean, Memphis is under 500. So what does Simmons do? Does he go with them to Fayetteville, or does he go back to Oxford? I, I don't know. It's been all over the place. I mean, there was talk at one point about flying him back and forth, but I don't. I don't know the answer to that. I, I, again, I, I'll bite my tongue. He threw two last. No, they did not cut off the base last night. Memphis just did it <laughs> and successfully. Of um, yes. <laughs> That would have been a play, okay? Hey, hey, what the hell is that going on? All right. So, yeah, look, um, I don't. Austin Simmons was really good last night. It, it was a big move for him from the standpoint of he was able to sustain for two innings because he's been so adrenalized that he's been giving everything in one inning and then falling apart. And I, I thought he held it together better last night. But look, they they, they didn't pitch well. They were, again, bad with runners in scoring position. I think they were two for 14 with runners in scoring position last night. Memphis was better. They give up the big inning. I mean, Gunnar Dennis gives up a couple runs there. Mitch Morrell in the seventh. It wasn't like they were throwing scrubs either. They were throwing a guy who was their Friday night starter a few weeks ago. And then Mitch Morrell, who's a super senior classification-wise that's been around for a long time and giving them meaningful innings. I mean, it's just... It just is what it is right now. Um, Mike, last night. I've covered enough Ole Miss basketball over the years that I, I can relate to your frustrations. Yeah, I mean. Where you just, you run out of things to write about. You run out of things to say. You run out of things to 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 try to describe it. You run out of things to sort of. Because the. Yeah, Austin's not a starter. No. But he might can give you one or two on the weekend. I mean, Mike, last night, I mean, he's not saying the problem Mike has is it is baseball. And yeah. unlike basketball, he gives 56 interviews. Yeah. And he's just talking nonstop and there's nothing to say. Well, sometimes when there is no answer, there is no answer. So you're not even doing that twice a week and getting frustrated. I mean, because look, Mike wasn't wrong yesterday. Gives the quote, enough blame to go around. Obviously, we're just not good enough. It's in us, but we won't let it. And not tough enough to play through it right now. That was the message out there. We have to be tougher, and we're not. And it's my fault. We didn't handle the game, and it starts to snowball on you. Okay, I want to ask a question that I think a lot of fans have. And sure. I, I, I legitimately have it. In baseball, when someone says we're not tough enough, what the hell does that mean? I think it's mentally not staying focused. Because I think that's part of the defense thing. Is everybody goes, oh, they suck defensively. Okay, they're bad behind the plate defensively, and Luke Hills had a really bad start to the season defensively. Otherwise, they're not athletically bad defenders. They make a lot of stupid mistakes. They throw the ball away on pickoffs. They do they do things where it looks like either, because these are all kind of, in baseball, these all get jumbled together. Pressing, lack of focus, something that's not allowing you to freely just play. I think toughness in baseball is... Whether there's adversity or whatever's going on, you're just playing. Your mind is pretty clear, and you're just playing baseball. Mm -hmm. And they're not doing that. I feel like they are thinking way too much, and errors are compounding. They're, it's, it, that's why you have six errors in a game. You have six errors in a game because you make two errors, and then everybody gets freaked the hell out. Because otherwise, you're not making six errors sure. in a game. It's D1 baseball players. right? It's because they are just tight as a drum and freaking out or doing whatever they're doing. Now they're pressing offensively, and when you're pressing offensively, you're not tough because you're not giving quality at bats. You're not getting in there with a purpose. Like I said, offensively, I thought it was identity and purpose is the problem. They got some guys that kind of hit the ball at the ballpark. They got some guys that kind of don't. Some guys that take a bunch of pictures and walk. And it's it's not like, I'm hey, I'm putting the one through nine together in this efficient manner where they do different things. It's that I can't really tell you what the plan is, one through nine. I mean, you know, last night – they scored four runs, Neil, with seven doubles as a team last night. Oh. Ethan Leje had three. Judd Udermark had two. They had four other guys get on base at least twice. You hit seven five doubles. Guys. You should score more than four runs. Yes. They had five people get on base twice, and Udermark and Groff get on at least three or four times. They out hit them 11 to 10. And lost scored four runs. Nine to four. Nine to four. Yeah. Lost by five. Well, the good news is they get an easy weekend. They weren't clean. They weren't clean defensively. Error really hurt them last night. I mean, they're just, it's just the same thing over and over and over. So that's my point: is 
when those things are going on and you're just back at the park and back at the park and talking and talking and talking and talking, it can it can feel really long on you. And that's what's hitting them right now. And then, yeah, they get on the bus today and they drive. They need a rain out and some skaters. They do need some Bull Durham rain out right now. What's the forecast in Fayetteville for the weekend? I know? think they're okay. Let's see. You're going to look that up? I am. I'm, I'm curious. I can't see anything. Get old sucks, man. What are you looking up? The weekend forecast in Fayetteville. Fayetteville, Arkansas, daily forecast Friday, 71. No, Thursday, 62 and sunny. Okay. It's going to be cold Thursday night, 33 degrees. Okay. Uh, 71 and sunny on Friday. Okay. 4% chance of precipitation, low of 48. 72 and sunny on Saturday. Beautiful weather up there. Low of 55, 2% chance of rain. So, no. Yeah. Um, Not getting the rain out unless you somehow break into Bomb Walker and turn on the damn sprinklers. Look, you can get mad that it's the case. Ole Miss has a pitching coach. It's Mike Bianco. Mm -hmm. Like, so you can get mad about the way it is, but it's not true they don't have one. Because I, I will I will knock out this misconception, and I know this is going to really piss off a couple people on the message board, and I'll deal with it today. Just because someone pitched or didn't pitch doesn't mean they're not a capable pitching coach. Of course. There are more catcher pitching coaches in the Major League Baseball than pitchers. 100%. And Ole Miss has three catchers on its staff. Now, they cannot be good at it. That's up to y'all to decide. But just the idea that they don't have a former pitcher on the staff is not automatically an issue. Now, in saying that, political commenter put the stats on the board a couple days ago. Their runs allowed has been horrendous since 2019. I mean, they're basically dead last in the league over that period in runs allowed. So it's not working, but it's not simply of system. Now, if you want to have a coach criticism, and it's nothing against him personally. He is an amazing person. Yes. But it's they promoted Chris Cleary when they had the ability to just go get a coach from somewhere because the third assistant passed, which meant you were no longer just hiring volunteers. You could have gone and stolen somebody's second or first assistant in a smaller program or whatever you wanted to do. Why didn't he, in your opinion? I think they tested Cleary on his ability to scout and whatever, and he wanted to keep staff continuity. Again, I didn't make the decision. I'm explaining the reasoning. When was the last time? And we'll just throw 2020 out because I have a I had I had this argument with somebody actually about 2020 the other day. Because people do this deal about 2020 where they go, well, Ole Miss was going to be dominant in 2020. I'm like, you don't know that. You can think that, but you don't know. I think it. they were going to be the best team in the league from a starting pitching standpoint, right? Because they had Hogan and Casey. Mm -hmm. They were going to be very top-heavy offensively, but they had two huge lineup problems that had not come to fruition yet because they hadn't played in the league. Right. And that was my point. They had two things that when I look back, I go, mm, maybe you find it and fix right. it, but, but... maybe you don't. Yeah, there's a couple things that would not have worked long term. And so I'm not going to convict that team, but I'm also not going to acquit it. I'm just going to throw the case out. So back to my question. Not counting 2020, when was the last time that Ole Miss was a a dominant regular season team or a very good regular season team. I mean, they went 18 and 12 in 2021. Okay. They even, they even, they even survived Hoagland getting hurt and still went 18 and 12. So this is last three, which is the irony of ironies that it includes a national championship. And it's where we are. And it's why I feel like I'm in bizarro world mm -hmm. right now, because for years we went, Mike does everything to give both sides their argument. And it was this consistent, really good regular season team, despite the problem, the disadvantages. And yet a team that couldn't get to Omaha and they lost in the postseason to Utah and Tulane and Virginia and whoever. Tennessee Tech, Cal State Bakersfield, yeah, Maryland. I mean, like all the way up and down. Now it's the same exact thing, but we're doing it with 2022 and going, hey, you won a national title. I think we're really lucky to get in. And it's where I mean, NC State 1983 kind of luck. I mean, just just I mean, it's very it's yeah. I mean, because even the regular season, you get this back and forth. You get people that go, hey, they went 14 and 16, and that took winning six in a row at one point, and then getting one against AM and just getting in. They lost their first game in Hoover, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you have a segment go, yeah, but they were number one in the country and they really just had a bad four weeks. And it's like sort of. Okay, you know what I mean? Like, it's all of it. I yeah, mean, sure. they won at Auburn to start league play that year. Auburn went to Omaha, mm -hmm. and then they fell off the damn wagon for five weeks and then got pretty good the last three weeks. Yeah. 
So whatever you wanted, it was right there for you. That's my point. And that's what's happening now. And it's people frustrated by the contract because the contract was in a, in a way that everything was just rolling all the way around. And it's kind of like this too. I, I told some people last night. Yeah, they won the championship. The ring doesn't go away. No, that's not the point. The no, point was what was the program's health level moving forward at that point? That's the conversation. It's not whether the ring goes away. It's why you'd have been justified to overpay him salary wise, but keep some le- some flexibility in the buyout at that mm-hmm. point, because you pay him for what he did, but while also give yourself some room. And it's it's kind of like this. Look, it's like this expansion thing. I posted last night on the board. Uh, the board of aldermen in Oxford met at five o'clock yesterday, and they approved what the university wants to do as far as pertaining to Old Taylor Road sidewalks, medians, things along those lines. I, I I did not phrase it correctly in the first post. Um, That's completely on me. I said they approved the expansion. They had no ability to approve this expansion. What they were approving was trying to figure out what they were going to do because the city wants to have the ability down the road to expand Old Taylor Road. And if the original plan the university wanted to do happened just as it was, there was not the ability to do that because it just came too close to the road and it did not work as far as giving the city some flexibility because the stadium is campus property, even though the city kind of co-owns it. And that's a whole nother story I'll mention in a minute when I talk about Oklahoma. But the road right there is city property, not campus. Old Taylor Road running in front of the baseball stadium is still Oxford. It is not University of Mississippi. The, the old bridge when you go around is the line, is the line of, of difference there. So that's why the city was involved at that point. Um, I posted three things on social media and then a link on the board. They want the ability downstream to have wider sidewalks, keep Old Taylor as is, pay, maybe put a turn lane in or even four lane Old Taylor Road d- down the road. So they needed room for that without the expansion making that impossible in the future. That's what that was about last night. Because the master plan for the university that's been publicized for a couple of years now is to build a welcome center and a parking garage at the corner of Old Taylor and University coming into campus that way. Okay. If you put a parking garage there, you're going to need turn lanes and some access or that will be a disaster. So Old Taylor will have to be adjusted at that point. So that's why that's that's why that's going and happening that way. And You'll still be able to get off six and go to Kroger, though. That's what's important. I think that's about to get changed too. I've, I've heard. Yeah. About to get, I think. So all <laughs> that to say, be, that's going to be something, yeah. man. All <laughs> that to say, <laughs> you don't get that thing done in time. And whoa, boy. <laughs> hey, <Yeah>. peace. <laughs> I already avoid Jackson Avenue. I don't know where I'm going now. Tupelo. Um, <laughs> I might go shopping Tupelo at that point. But what I told somebody last night is, look, we can break down the minutia of this expansion and right or wrong, but it's not the first time that people have expanded stadiums without necessarily cash flowing immediately. I mean, that's every time Mm -hmm. pretty much they're mad at the program. It's not actually mad at the expansion, right? You guys are mad because you're whatever you are in the league right now. And it's sucked for the majority of the last three years outside of that run. And you're going, there's so many things going on and a pay for. Why is it this? Now? I don't think it's going to end up being 30. I think it's going to be somewhere in the low twenties before it's over. Um, it's going to make about 1.2 million a year, give or take. I did some kind of rough math in my head this morning based off what premium seat numbers are. Um, you know, and I don't know how long you amortize it out and pay it off that or whatever. It does not, I don't think it's a detriment for a couple different reasons. One, that two, the money is earmarked for that. Like one thing that people miss sometimes, I'm not talking down to anybody is that you don't necessarily have complete flexibility of donor dollars. They go to things a lot of times. So you can't just go, hey, go pay NIL with that or do something. It's like, no, they they gave for this specific purpose. Yeah. And because of that, you have that or don't have that, and that's the way that works at that point. So there's that to it. I, I'd ask, I asked Keith the question. If you listen to the podcast, you heard it. If you didn't, he said simply that he was building for 10 and 15 years from now, and whoever was in his desk – they'd be better off with that having been built had not been built and they can do it right now. And they have the ability financially to do it. So they're doing it. That was his reasoning. The reason they did not do the big outfield expansion that people wanted is frankly, because it did not increase revenue. There was no revenue increase out there. I said six, Uh I meant seven doors, get off seven to go to 
Yeah, 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 yeah. I meant I meant Highway Seven. My fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Point still stands because it's already kind of a. Every time you get off, at least from my direction, and turn left back down University, you're just praying the person coming the other way lives there and knows they don't have the right of way. Because it's a little bit of chicken every single time of, but, of, of and I would I would, I would guess that at least fifty percent of the people don't know they have the right of way. Yeah, you mean think they do? Think have the they right do have the right of way? Yes. Yeah, because every time I'm looking, like you going, you you you. I mean, I did it on the phone with you yesterday. That's mm-hmm. where I was when oh, I was talking. Yeah. Because I was kind of looking, going, "Hey, you, you stopped. We, we good? Yeah. Are we good? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's up right here? How's it going?" <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, I agree with Tupelo Reb. He says that's a logical explanation by Keith. I agree completely. I, people are upset that the program is. You and I had this conversation before we got started. I we won't dive into the whole thing because I don't feel like. Look, they're about to go into the tank as far... And I don't mean Ole Miss. I mean nationally. Mm-hmm. People are going to stop expanding. Yes. So you kind of are doing it now or you're not doing it for a decade. Agreed. Probably. At least through the... Just to figure out what the hell's going on. It's such a part of the culture in this town in the spring. Ole Miss baseball. And that's frankly to Mike's credit because it hasn't always been that way. But it's such a part of the culture of this town, Ole Miss baseball. But it's the part of the culture, Chase, is that they win. You go to the park and two out of three or three out of four times you leave with a smile on your face because yeah. the Rebels Spring won. vibes. Hold yeah, on. 72 degrees and it's sunny and you had a couple of beers and Ole Miss, cool. Ole Miss beat Auburn 6-3. to three. Here lately they don't win. And people are getting frustrated. Now they're still going. I don't know how much longer they'll keep going. There's a couple of series late in the season where the attendance might not be what you want it to be. Then again, it might be. I don't know. They pay Keith Carter a fairly nice sum of money, and sometimes he has to make really hard decisions. And If he's listening to this right now, he's like, yeah. (laughs) He's probably not, but... I mean... It's not a job you do for free because you have to make difficult decisions that require a lot of thought that have ramifications. Yeah, I, you know, and, look, and just pinning it all on just Mike and whatever. I don't know that maybe that is right. Maybe it is completely wrong. I don't know. As Borky said a couple of days ago on Twitter, maybe the goal is just don't win a national title. State sucks. LSU got beat by Southern. They're bad. Ole Miss. Maybe there is something to elevating and then just coming off of it right, right now. Jay Johnson fixed it yesterday. I don't know if you saw. What did what he He told players no more phones in the locker rooms or at the stadium. That was his move. That's the move. No more phones. Really? Yeah. So he thinks they're distracted. Not. I, I don't know. Just said no more phones. They're not focused on the right thing. I, perhaps. Really? How's that going to go over? <laughs> How many 20-year-olds do you know? <laughs> I have a hundred. I mean, <laughs> give me your phone is fighting words. <laughs> I mean. Do you, do you put a basket out by the door? What, do you, what, 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 what are we doing here? I don't, I, I How, ass- what's the move? I would assume you have to leave it in your vehicle. Got a lot of sick moms all of a sudden. Hey, coach. Whew. My grandma's got pneumonia. I'm waiting on a test result. I mean, no phones I mean, in the locker rooms. In baseball, where downtime is oh, constant. Constant. You're at the park three, four hours early. See, maybe Dave Van Horn's plan is, hey, I just won't win it. We'll just be steady, and I just won't win the thing, and we'll stay steady. Because, I mean, he's kind of got it rolling other than a title. I mean, if he wins a the title, they'll, they'll, <laughs> it'll fall apart. Just look at everybody else. You think Dave goes longer to try to win one? I'm sure. You think it eats that he, other than he normally would? He's I'm, 63. I mean, I can you imagine? How- I told you, I feel not Ole Miss's year, just in general, I feel bad for him. Sure. I do. I mean, he's kind of an asshole, but I feel bad for him. I mean, like, I mean, most good coaches are kind yeah, of assholes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, sure. I mean, they've won, what, 18 in a row now at home? Yeah. They're number one in the country. I mean, he's better than me if he could have gotten over the flaw ball thing, the pop up thing. I mean, the, the championship is in the air. I, I, I That's can't. brutal. 
That's worse than getting beat by a walk off or something because the dude made a play. Oh yeah, of course. Kid didn't make a play. He popped up. So it's not Albert Pujols hitting a ball 460 yeah, feet. Yeah, it's not David Freese back in the day. No. It's not Warren Morris at LSU. No, it's a pop-up in foul territory, and no fan touched it. It's not even a Bartman. And Mark has a good point here. Actually, for a credit to Ole Miss and why it matters and why you have to get it right and you can't let it fall, mm -hmm. is that it is. We talk about this every day. Every sport is easier to stay home, easier to stay home, easier to stay home. Every baseball game is on TV. Well, and look. And they don't. They show up. They keep showing up. It's the most. Even in the grandstand, they show up. They buy the season tickets. I, I, I get it wasn't perfect, but your team's not perfect. And at a time where, and I'm not, this is not political. Laura came home from the grocery store on Sunday. It's a, really expensive. A typical grocery store trip. Yeah, I know. And she was like, because I went out to help her unload. Yeah. And she goes. It was really expensive. Yeah. Like worried that I was going to see the number and like explode or something. And that's not really, you know, me. Yeah. It's not really me. And I was like, well, how much? And she told me, I was like, oh my God, what'd you buy? And she's like, well, I didn't do anything different. I'm like, well, hold on. What, what, just, what, what it's happened? It's about 50% up. Yeah. 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 And so my point is, is people still spend the money to kind of cost. You got to fill up your car. It's expensive to eat out. I, it's really expensive to eat out these days. Like, like, like crazy. Yeah. Even fast casuals. Yeah. You got to go do – and if you want people to stay – you know, they want – little Johnny wants a T-shirt, whatever the case. I mean, you, it's expensive, and you still have people doing it until they don't. Yeah. And once they don't, getting them to come back is really hard. Yeah. So, no, it's – look, it, there's no doubt. No matter what you're doing or not doing, it is a critical time. And I don't know. I, I I I don't have answers for you. I've thought the last few days are kind of weird on some things along that line. Um, it's so early. It's it's it's, it's, it's April the third. They could still fix it. Look, they could go to. I know people going. Don't jump at me. They could go to Fayetteville and win two out of three. It's baseball. And then you come back, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, well, we're five and seven now. You 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 have some hope. Or they could go to Fayetteville and get rolled. And then it gets weird. I mean, it was a few years ago when a team was 8 and 10. And I walked into a certain admin's office and mm -hmm. was asked the question, hey, what if we do this? 8 and 10. They ended up being pretty good in the at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. It was the AD that left instead. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you, you don't know yet. But, no, look, they're, they're not playing well enough to win baseball games, especially in 2024's SEC when it's so damn good. They're not. They're they they are not playing well in any phase enough to get that done. So we're we're beating a dead horse a little bit. We'll probably beat it again tomorrow. Um, we'll watch Arkansas Ole Miss on Thursday night. Yeah, we'll and, have a uh, hand raised guys tomorrow night. Will be a Thursday watch. night. Oh, it's tomorrow night. Tomorrow Sorry. night. It is Wednesday already. It's already. Oh my I know. God. I know. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> you know, right. about to correct me. I was like, what? You know, what I was thinking. I was like, it is Wednesday, isn't it? I mean, because I remember getting up this morning and I thought. Is today Tuesday or Wednesday? And then I thought, it's Wednesday. And I was like, how the hell is it already Wednesday? So we'll have a hand raise, guys, tomorrow night. It'll be a watch party. We'll turn on uh, Ole Miss, Arkansas. Is anything else come on tomorrow night of, of note? Uh, I'll look. I don't know. I'll okay. see if anybody else is playing or what's going on. We'll turn so, it on, and we'll take calls, and we'll watch the game. probably some NBA game. Yeah. NBA game put me in a bad mood last night. Oh, really? Not really, for just a second. Thunder played without SGA and without Jalen Williams. And oh, then shut up. Almost still beat the Sixers. Well, Had them beat. Then shut up. <laughs> when Neil freaks out like that, he might need better help. show is sponsored by BetterHelp. A lot of us spend our lives wishing we had more time. The question is time for what? If it was unlimited, how would you use it? Best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you. Make it a priority. If it's important to you, you will find the time. Therapy can help you find what matters to you so you can do more of it benefited from therapy in the past maybe in time to get back in it you know the uh the positives to doing that again you get a fresh voice that's just there to help you no preconceived notions nothing that uh their baggage is bringing into the conversation they are there to make you be a positive coping skills positive interactions for you moving forward so if you're thinking of starting therapy you better help a try entirely online designed to be convenient flexible suited to your schedule fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist switch therapists anytime for no additional charge learn 
to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. BetterHelp.com slash MPW today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash MPW. Our next partner is Athletic Greens. I drink AG1 by Athletic Greens literally every day. I give AG1 a try because I want a better gut health, sustained energy, immune system support. I hate taking those big pills. I drink AG1 every morning. Love knowing I'm doing something good for my body, giving my body the nutrition it craves, and covering my nutritional bases. Covering my nutritional bases for the day literally couldn't be easier, which is why I trust Athletic Greens. I just mix one small scoop of AG1 with water and drink it first thing each morning. Done. I also like that it costs less than $3 per day. It's pretty good if you ask me. It's a really effective daily habit with the highest quality sourced ingredients. It's a win-win. If a comprehensive solution is what you need for your supplement routine, then Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash MPW. That's athleticgreens.com slash MPW. Check it out. Uh, are you retiring soon? How long should you wait to take Social Security? What accounts should you Oh God! Should you pull from first? Are you already retired? Should you consider Roth conversions? These are just some of the questions that can only be answered with a personalized retirement income plan. Andrew Segoe with Segoe Wealth Management specializes in helping folks just like you come up with their retirement game plan. Whether you meet at his office in Collierville or prefer Zoom from anywhere, schedule a free discovery meeting and see what they can do for you. It's rebelsretire.com. Our show tomorrow night will be brought to you by Comer Heating and Air, Southern Air Conditioning and Heating, different names, same great products, people, and services. If you live in Oxford, Batesville, Tupelo, or the surrounding area, call Comer, 662-801-1777. If you live in Hernando, Memphis, or the surrounding area, call Southern, 662-429-4429. Uh, the College Corner is in Oxford now, right off of Sisk Avenue in the Oxford Commons. 4,000 square feet of the best Rebel gear you'll find. Plenty of uh, parking available. The staff's going to have you in and out, ready for Swayze or wherever else you're headed in absolutely no time. Also, two locations in the Jackson area, and uh, you can catch them online at collegecornerstore.com. Call Argent Welts 401k advisory services team today. They'll conduct a complimentary, no obligation benchmarking and analysis of your current 401k plan. Mention that you heard about Argent Wealth on the uh, Blue Sky Live, the Oxford Exxon podcast. Get 10% off your first year's fees. It's myargentwealth.com. I think, I mean, thank you when I say thanks for the uh, questions for the baseball mailbag that I will uh, publish sometime Friday morning. I was <laughs> navigating through those last night to uh, to parse, combine, figure out what to, uh, to say in any way, including the couple of them that I have no answer for. I... I, I, I picked I a one. bad time to ask. I apologize. I typically ask when the Tuesday game was over. It was over, just not over at that moment. And I added one. You guys had questions. I had a question. You did. Just why? It's a longer answer than it's probably going into the uh, into the mailbag. You're there, telling me but... I'm not going to make the mailbag? <sighs> a lot of stuff there. I bet. There was a lot of stuff there. You guys, I was able to let you get your frustration out a little bit. It's fine. That's a Tuesday. It's a Tuesday. I can imagine what a Friday <laughs> might be like. <laughs> State's here next weekend. Grove Bowl weekend. <laughs> yeah. I don't think they're going to play a football game. They're going to go out there. Oh, they're going to be out there. Just don't know that they're going to be playing Will anyone football. have shoulder pads on? <sighs> See, and I think 90% of the people think this is smart. It's the vocal 10% that might be the eh, interesting they'll be ones. All right. Yeah, they'll be fine. They're not going anywhere. I think Lane, I'm, I'm going to, I feel like I'm like, I'm not a kiss up. You know that. I like Lane fine. Lane, I think, likes me fine. We don't know each other. I think there's a professional respect. I think the guy's grown up completely. I think he looks at things analytically and goes, this is what we should do. And he said yesterday, you know, it might be right, might be wrong. I don't know the exact quote. Yeah, sure. Might be right, might be wrong, but it's what we're doing. We're really focusing mentally this spring. We're not doing a lot of tackling and hitting because it's going to be a long season. No one can get hurt. And we might play a lot of games. He says, I'm not saying we're going to play a lot of games, but there's a lot of games. 
If you think about it, if you go all the way, you play, if you go to the SEC title game and go all the way, that's 16 games. And if you don't go to the SEC title game and you have to play a play-in game, it's yeah. 16 games. Yeah. You could play 16 games. Well, if you're going to play 16 games, you might not want to get a bunch of people hurt in April. The NFL is not going into minicamp going, hey, we're going to beat the hell out of each other today. Not they only, play 17 Not games. only that, they don't even put pads on. It's mental. He's got an older team. He's got a bunch of experienced guys. Some guys are, are learning golden system for the first time. They don't need a bunch of guys getting hurt. You want guys healthy for the offseason. And that's what they're doing. Lane in 2024 is a more comfortable, more mature, smarter, more comfortable with himself coach than in 2020, 2021. No doubt. Those seasons. No doubt. He understands the program. He has plans for what he believes has gives them the best chance of working. I mean, I, actually, I mean, Ole Miss couldn't find a better fit today. Oh no, no, no. The Lane Kiffin today. Oh, I think Lane Kiffin today is a top five college football coach. Yeah, I, I mean, I do. Yeah, Na- yeah. Nationally, I think he's top five, and and here's why. He might not like where some things are going. In fact, unless he's lying day he after hates day, him. he hates some of this. And I don't think Lane's lying. There's no reason to. But his answer yesterday was like they they, they added some personnel people. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, you have to sort of see where we are and where it's going and plan for it. And you have to make personnel decisions based on valuations. What is a player worth? I think some of the Quinshawn Judkins decision was a valuation. It was more than just some of the people around him were problematic. How was that for diplomacy? I almost yeah, used a good. different word. Thank problematic. you. Problematic. Um, I just think, you know, you have to evaluate. Okay, here's what our budget is. Here's, because he's, like he said, the answer to everything can't be, well, we need this, let's just go buy it. That eventually burns you. So the answer is, what is this worth? What would what would it be worth outside? What is it worth inside? And you you can't ask the same six people to make those decisions day after day after day after day after day. You have to have people that are planning, and they're doing it. And for someone like Kiffin, and this is the interesting part, and this is where a lot of college football coaches, God bless them, they fail. I can think of one in particular that's in the SEC West that will fail at this. Okay. You have to have people who you bring in who might be smarter than you, who are more analytical than you, who have skills you don't have, who can give you information. And at the end of the day, this is where I asked Kiffin about this yesterday. I thought I got a great answer. This was why Nick Saban was great. It's not that Nick Saban was the smartest guy in the room at all times. Saban was great, and he was great because he brought in people from all the time who maybe he didn't completely like or didn't really um, understand, but he listened to them. He took in the information. He analyzed it, and then he made a decision. And now once he made the decision, that was the decision. And I think Lane's learned how to do that. And he said this yesterday. He said that that's not the way he was pre-Saban. It's not how Pete Carroll was. But he's brought in people who are smart. He didn't bring in um, um, Mississippi State. Coach Zach Arnett. Right. Thank you. He didn't bring Zach Arnett as a slap at Mississippi State. He brought in Zach Arnett because Zach Arnett is considered a very prominent defensive mind. He didn't do it as a barb. He did it because that's a defensive mind that you can listen to. He brought in Pete Golding. Look, Pete's a big-name coach. If this thing goes really, really well next year, Pete's probably going to start having some opportunities. Mm -hmm. But he brought those people in because he listens to them. And he's learned to bring people in, to listen to them, take in their information, acknowledge that they might be better at this particular thing than he is. That's okay. Get the information and then make a decision and go from there. And I think that's that's maturity, but it's also intelligence. It's also just sort of getting it. 
it's him having plans. Yes. Listening to people. It's all the things you just said. And it's his ability to, even from a finance standpoint, hey, let's be very efficient with the Grove Collective. Like, mm-hmm. Here's the price. Here's the market value on that guy. Here's what we'll do. And if not, nope, sorry. We're going to go somewhere else. We're going to play a little money ball, as he talks about, but not yeah. to the nature yeah. that people take it. Right. And then, look, it's back to the thing. The symbiotic nature between the athletic department and the foundation and Kiffin is really good right now where, yeah, sure, Ole Miss's athletic budget's $150 million and 11th in the SEC, which is a crazy number, but it is what it is. Yeah. But they spend on football like they have a $220 million budget because you just freaking have to. It's what matters because it picks everything up, and it's the reason you have a $150 million budget. 100%. So you go, hey, look, I don't really care if the bottom line makes sense. we got to figure it out for this. If that's if this is something that contributes potentially to more wins, okay, we'll figure it out. But he's smart, and that's the figuring out. But he's smart enough to know that you're you're the strategy of well, you know what? We'll just I mean, <laughs> it's the American government. We'll just keep spending. Mm-hmm. It'll never come back to bite us. Yeah. That's dumb. Yeah, no. Hey, we 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 will have limitations, and so if we decide that we need this particular big ticket item. Okay, but that might mean that we have to be more efficient in this area, in this area, in this area. And he is not going to skimp on analytics and strategy and things like that. They're going to make sure they're at the forefront of that. You know, it's why he, they would, the whole access thing. I mean, I completely got it from day one. I don't really care. It, I couldn't care less whether I see an April practice for the rest of my life. What difference does it make? But it was. I'm not going to invite more problems. Mm-hmm. Get it? Yes. This is either a positive or a negative for my program, period. If if everybody's going to show up and write depth charts and I've got to deal with this, that's a problem, and I'm, I, I have a way to not deal with it. Yeah, it's not efficient to my day. I completely get it. Yeah. Other people lost their minds over it, and I was like, oh, I get it, 100%. Look, you, like, you know me. You know what I'm about to say. You've been around me long enough. And some people don't like this, and I don't really know why. I think because it's not dramatic enough. Some people really love the drama of all of it. You're going to play games, man, and they're going to keep score. And the expectations now here are really high. If you go eight and four, it won't matter what you did or didn't do. And if you go eleven and one, it will not matter what you did or didn't do. Did you see where Hunter Urechek? Did you see this quote? No. I mean, dude, say? basically fired himself. He's what he said. He's talking to Andrew Hutchinson. You know okay. Andrew. Yeah, I know Andrew. He's on his podcast. Okay. Um, I want to give credit where it's due. I think it's called the One Star Podcast. I can't remember. Is it really? I think it's that's pretty funny. I give okay. it's yeah. Andrew's a funny guy. Yeah. Uh, Andrew covers Arkansas for does a good job. Used a good to be job. for rivals. We yeah, like him. A really, do, really good dude. He asked him about his next season for Arkansas, this coming season for Arkansas, a make or break year. Meaning, does Pittman have to win or do yeah, you fire? Sure, him? Whatever. And he's like, well, I wouldn't say it's a make or break year, and I'm paraphrasing, but we have to show improvement. We have to get away from four and eight and more towards seven and five, eight and four. And I was like, dude. You're establishing a ceiling of seven and five. You just established a season, a, a ceiling, and you put numbers on it. The board of trustees should fire you tomorrow. In in addition to the thing he's done with Musselman, your check is so weird because he's done some great things and some horrible things. Like yeah. he does nothing, just okay. Yeah, he's a top five AD or should be the AD at Saskatchewan State. Yeah. Like it is. If I'm Dave Van Horn, sometime around five fifty nine on Thursday, <laughs> I'm like, hey, you see this big crowd? Yeah. You know, all the stuff going on. I want more money. Yeah, I don't think he's thinking like that. I don't think he's a top five paid coach. I don't. No, and he should be. Show him. I should be number one. I mean, that place, look, it will be absolutely filled to the gills. Yeah, that's the, and what's kind of Ole Miss's problem is Ole Miss is three and six. Arkansas won't see three and six in the fan base on Friday, on Thursday night. It's going to be a rabid, row, rowdy place to go in and play on Thursday for Ole Miss. Yeah. No, they've, I mean, he's much like Mike. He's made it. It's a part of the, it's hard to get tickets there. It's, it's a part of the culture. It's not an AD. It's not Hunter Yurchek, but the uh, Oklahoma president was interesting uh, yesterday afternoon. 
<laughs> Joseph Haraz Jr. Um, is his name. But my, my question is, where's Joe during this? Because they have one of the top ADs in the country. Where's Easily one of the best. I mean, obviously, he's on board to some extent, or the president would not be saying this. But I don't know. It would have been coming better from Joe. The fan base would have taken this better. You know, presidents and ADs aren't always on the exact same page. I, I guarantee the fan base would rather appear from Castiglione than this cat. <laughs> no doubt. Because I didn't know this cat's name until right now. No. So they're trying to build a new arena for basketball and gymnastics and, and whatnot. So he threatens the city of Norman um, at a time when fans are just tired of paying more money in every way. And if you're going to have to do NIL and you're going to have to do all these things too, now putting a tax as well is a problem. Because it's, it, look, it's a problem in the NFL. The Kansas City yesterday, mm -hmm. the Chiefs and the Royals were told no by the city on a I think $2 billion total tax hit to build a new stadium for them. Um, new area, whatever it's called. It's where Oklahoma um, City was able to get it done yeah, 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 yeah. to build a new arena for the Thunder. And it's why one of the godsends of godsends, and I've written about it forever, was the entertainment tax in 1988 for Swayze Field to be built in Ole Miss and something that still continues to this day. You pay two extra percent on entertainment that goes back towards some of those initiatives. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's been a really helpful thing in a ton of ways. You'd hate to throw it on the ballot right now. That's what I'm saying. No, yeah. it's, well, it's why a lot of times, you know, you probably could – you probably think, hey, you probably ought to be a little higher. The university should get a little more. And you go, no, let's just let's just move it forward. Just keep all the headache out of that. Looks good. Sign the line. Mm -hmm. Extend that bad boy. All good. Yeah. So, sorry. Joseph Faraz tells the OU Daily, which I assume is the student newspaper in, in Oklahoma. Sure. Oh, why not? That if the Norman City Council does not approve the proposed $1 billion, not like $300 million, $1 billion entertainment district, that would, would feature a new arena for OU athletics, then the university alongside donors would look to other cities to build an arena for which its basketball and gymnastics teams would be, <laughs> would be anchor tenants in possibly the entertainment district as a whole. Quote, I'm very hopeful uh, and sorry, I'm very hopeful and do everything I can to keep it here in Norman. But if this isn't approved by the city council for whatever reason, then we're going to be looking at other cities, Oklahoma City, more surrounding areas, and figure out where there is a group that actually wants to do this. The Oklahoma president to the city council. Yesterday. Wow. Ding, ding. Yes, let's go. You're coming to the SEC. You better up your NIL, buds, because you're not there right now. No, they're not there. And now, hey, by the way, Norman, which is not a big place. No. Billion dollars. But it's 20, 25 minutes from Norman to OKC. You going to take the Sooners downtown? Is that going to work? I mean, really, you go, do you, are you no. expecting a bunch of college kids to go drive? It's to an empty threat. You're not moving to Oklahoma City. I don't even know where Moore is. I've been up there a bunch. I mean, I'm sure it's close, but come on. Why doesn't Ole Miss have a gymnastics team? Just money. Yeah, I mean, yeah. when you don't, you start one, and it's nine miles. More. Yeah. Still not going to get a bunch of college kids to drive nine miles. Not going to do it. Are you really going to do that to your town? Uh, it's been uh, with you, and it's probably a lot like Oxford and Ole Miss where it's one in the same. Well, I know if I'm sitting on the Norman City Council right now, I'm voting no. Yeah. Nope. Unless I really, I mean, I, I don't know the dynamics around it, yeah. obviously. I don't know if the city really wants it because the entertainment district, I, n no idea. But getting threatened by the president, though, is not no. accomplishing it. That's that's not very <clears throat> diplomatic. We'll just go to Oklahoma City. What are they going to do? They just got the thunder or something. You think they're going to go build you an arena? No, they're not. <laughs> no chance. Because they were They don't want you. They were terrified. Yeah, they're not doing another one. The Thunder are a model. I, mean, I know I'm a fan. That's not, that's not the point. They're a model organization for community involvement mm -hmm, and sure. all that stuff. And they, they, they that's really good sized city for that. Yeah, and they really greased the skids to pull that off. Yeah, I just saw that and went, hmm, okay. You know, it's an interesting time in sports, asking for stadiums and asking for money at a time when interest rates are high and grocery bills are so expensive and it's so hard to buy a house or a car. I don't know, man. You got to – we joke about hand-raised guys, but there needs to be like a run on hand-raised guys in rooms where someone could go, this is not the time to ask for this. This is, this is stupid. 
it looks bad. It looks toned. Like the president there, it looks toned down. It's like Keith's going to win this. I saw uh, some media outlet last week that com- that basically pitted Ole Miss against Kansas for who thrives more in the future because of the way they were going about things and pointed out that Ole Miss had halted almost all of its facilities while Kansas has said they're going to focus on facilities. And it's like... Well, Kansas is trying to catch up on their football facility right. in hopes that that helps them land in one of the big two leagues. And... Because privately, Kansas is desperately wanting to go to the Big Ten or the SEC. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, of course. But you're not going to make a living right now going, we're going to funnel everything into facilities and forget the other stuff. It's just not the world we're in in 2024. Mm -mm. Well, I mean, take Ole Miss, for example. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Give me a number. $100 million? For what? To throw into Vault Hemingway to do stuff. $500 million? Okay. Half, I mean, a, half a billion dollars. That's what it is. Would you rather spend a half a billion dollars on that to fix up the stadium and make it look like a Taj Mahal, or would you rather spend $500, billion, $500 million on infrastructure for NIL? Well, that would buy a team. No, you'd buy lots of teams. You'd be really good. You'd be really good. I mean, it's not a realistic number, no, I don't know. get me wrong, but you understand my point. You can't ask. You can't go to people in this day and age and go, hey, we're going to do this stadium thing, and it's going to cost half a billion dollars. Can you strike a check for whatever? Oh, and by the way, can we, we need some money for football players. Mm-hmm. The people, at some point, people there is donor fatigue. Yeah. At some point, people just – I've said this so many times, and privately people tell me I'm right. There is going to come a moment when the guy that's giving $1,000 a month to whatever collective you pick – I don't want to – I don't want to make this about Ole Miss or people feel like someone goes, McCready was saying you shouldn't give to the Grove Collective. I'm not saying that. The maize and blue in Michigan. But I live with a woman. Yeah. And we had this conversation the other day. We're all sitting at the table. I'll tell you exactly where we were. We're at St. Leo having lunch on Saturday. It was good. It's awfully expensive, but it was good. Five of us together, and the girls are talking about a beach trip. I came home and shopped beach trips. It's expensive. They say they're up 70% over five years ago. 100%. Yeah. 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 And the day's coming in this environment where the guy that's giving $1,000 a month to the Maize and Blue Collective, she looks at him and goes, why are we doing this? So that you can buy one-tenth of a cornerback for the Wolverines? That could have paid for our trip to Florida. It's, it's not, that's the part where people say it's not sustainable. That's the part they mean. Oh, yes, yeah, sure, the super rich will continue to give, but but you can't make it on just the super rich. You've got to have, it's got to. Well, and I think the price per player is what causes some of it, too, because I think it's even different if it was smaller amounts. Yeah. And you thought you, for lack of a term, you bought a player. Yeah. But instead, you're buying one twentieth of a player. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm basically buying a stock option here that I get nothing back from. Like I, I think the prices are what have caused some of that donor fatigue too, especially at that mid level that you're that you're talking about at this point. So I don't know. All right. We'll uh transition, move on to second first prime shrimp, prime shrimp.com. A lot of different flavors for you. Everything from their new soy ginger, that is their uh great option that goes with hibachi dishes, put it with some extra proteins, veggies, rice. Some uh, stir fry maybe there from Prime Shrimp. They're their, their best selling options. New Orleans uh, style barbecue. It's outstanding as is the signature. It's a great for salads, protein snacks during the day, or an easy dinner. Kids got a lot of activities, a lot of stuff going on. It's getting daylight longer in the day. So let Prom Shrimp help you. We'll uh, we'll help you out. They deliver directly to your door. Use the code RG five pouches or more, twenty five percent off there with PromShrimp.com and code RG. We're also brought to you by John Edwards Regency Travel Incorporated in Memphis. John's part of Virtuoso. It's a worldwide network of speaking of travel, of uh, travel partners that allow John to supply his clients with added values, unique benefits, simply not available to other travelers. Uh, get in touch with John. Give him some parameters. Give him a budget. He'll give you some options. And no, you probably uh, you don't have to live in or near Memphis to take advantage of his services. 901-494-3387 or send him an email, Edwards at regencytravel.net. Oxford's newest Greek restaurant on the square is the perfect place to plan your uh, festive party event, your company dinner. Opa can accommodate up to 200 guests. 
For catering or booking information, contact Jeannie, 601-421-7147. We're brought to you by Service Specialist Staffing and Recruiting Agency, connecting great job opportunities to candidates since 1967. If uh, your company is looking to hire quality, hard-to-find talent, get in touch with Service Specialists. They can help. Keep in mind that payment of service is solely contingent on if you decide to hire a candidate that they send. You've got nothing to lose, so give Will, Sydney, or Kelsey a call at 601-573-9242 or check out their new and improved website, servicespecialistltd.com. Get the beautiful and healthy smile you deserve at Corinth Dental. Dr. Robin McQueen, Dr. Jenny Beth Hinder are devoted to restoring and enhancing the natural beauty of your smile using conservative state-of-the-art procedures that will result in a beautiful, long-lasting smile. From routine checkups to advanced treatment, including implants and Invisalign, Corinth Dental is here to help you achieve your smile goals. Schedule your appointment today. Take advantage of, uh, take that first step towards a better version of yourself. It's CorinthDental.com. Are you a displaced corporate exec wanting to put your career in your own hands? Are you an experienced entrepreneur looking to diversify? Either way, Andy Ludicke can help. He owns multiple franchises and businesses. He uses his expertise to help others find their American dream through a very thorough and free consultation process. So call Andy, put your life and your career in your own hands. It's 100% free, nothing to lose. MyPerfectFranchise.net, Andy at MyPerfectFranchise.net, or 404-973-9901. Podcast is brought to you by GNM Pharmacy, 662-236-2222. They deliver locally in the Oxford area, and they offer MedSync. Free prescriptions the same day each month. Take care of you. One trip to the pharmacy, one delivery, and you have everything you need when you need it from GNM. They delivered a couple to my house yesterday. Again, you can also get it in Holly Springs with Tyson Drugs. They transfer your medications easily. One phone call, they take care of the rest. As easy as possible there. Again, that is on South Lamar in Oxford, 662-236-2222. Did you see that the uh, the Cardinals still don't have one of their baseball jerseys from Nike? The baby yeah, blues? they don't have the blues. The St. Louis Cardinals. I mean, what the hell? Yeah, you think some college teams are? I, I'm amazed the college teams have them at all. Yeah. I mean, how do you bungle it this badly? I mean, this is beyond sucking. Yeah. Because, I mean, Ole Miss's blues look like crap. I was told they're not wearing them anymore this year, the navies. Oh, really? Yeah, I was told that they, they, they're, they're the Nike. They're the same thing, the MLB design. The Cubs, and that they grays, the they, Cubs uh, grays look blue. Well, it's my issue with the cream that Ole Miss has. From far off, they look great. And then I get up on them and go, oh, my God, they're cheap. Because it's the same thing. It's the Nike chassis thing that these MLB jerseys are. The MLB jerseys look cheap. They're awful. No, the colleges have just gotten hit by this. I mean, it is it is horrendous. What's interesting in MLB is how angry the players are about it. And the clubs are like, please don't talk. Good luck. Like, supposedly, players are going to the player reps on their team going, what the hell? I mean, why is it? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it, there's no way that contract gets renewed for next year, right? No way. No matter what the terms are. What was the goal? Was the goal to go to more eco-friendly? I mean, I have no idea. What was I haven't the plan? seen anything. I mean, I don't know what the plan was, but they they don't even fit right. But the players are really upset about pants. You know this about baseball players. Baseball players are very picky about their pants. They want their pants to feel a certain way. And apparently, they stopped tailoring the pants to the players' specifications, and they, they just cut the number of sizes possible down. And yeah, they just because some guy might want his pants to fit differently in the in the um, in his you know quads in his calves. You know, that was a big deal in football uniforms way back in the day is that when Ole Miss, and I don't forget the year, somebody else can help me here, when they became a bigger thing with Nike, I mean, this has been years ago, they went from just small, medium, large to actually the number system that yeah. fit everybody better. And it was a, it was a huge deal. Yeah. yeah, 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 whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. So, no, I, I completely get that. But, yeah, apparently it's a trickle-down thing that's been that's been a huge problem as, uh, as time has gone on with uh, – Austin, thanks for the super chat. He says Nike still looks and feels better than Adidas or Under Armour. Yeah, but Nike is exclusively the provider for MLB, and it's a problem. So they're stuck. Yeah. B 
big numbers out of the uh, women's elite eight games coming out a uh, coming out yesterday. The um, highest number ever for a women's college basketball game. Um, I assume a women's game ever because I would assume that was higher than any WNBA game that's been in its history. Yeah. Uh, twelve point three million. I think it peaked at sixteen. It's or a something huge like that. number. It is more than every NBA game last season outside of game five of the finals, mm-hmm. uh, more than Sunday at the Masters, more than either all World Series games or all but one. I think it was all. Only four college football games drew a bigger number. And only one regular season game drew a bigger number, Ohio State, Michigan. Um, I mean, it's a massive wow. number. And then to answer- UConn's women outdrew UConn's men. See, I thought, and I'll get to Caitlin Clark in a second. Mm-hmm. I thought that number was more important to the game, the UConn-USC. Now, look, you're going to get some leave the channel on stuff. It's why people put a really – they put something after the Super Bowl that they want to be seen. I understand that trickle down. But 6.7 million watching SC-UConn, that doesn't have Caitlin Clark in it. No. Now, it has your two biggest stars for next season. It does. Beckers, Juju Watkins. Yeah, had Gino. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that – doubled everything else. So is that because of them potentially? Is that just because it was on after Caitlin? No. Is it who Caitlin plays next? What's the reason? I don't know. I mean, I think there were a lot of people. But that, that number is very important. There were a lot of people like me who watched Iowa LSU and I was entertained. It was it was good. At the end of the day, if I watch sports, right, I want to be entertained. I'm not watching because I feel like I should. If it's boring, I'm not going to keep watching it. And it was good. And so I was like, ah, you know, I'll, I'll keep an eye on this next game. And I didn't stay with it the whole game. I got to like the half. And I think Connecticut was up at one point by nine. And I was like, I'm kind of basketballed out here. But I, I probably am not the only person that was like, ah, this game was so good. I'll give the next one a chance. That UConn over USC game. Drew 6.7, which would have surpassed every title game viewership since 1996 outside of last year's championship. Which was Iowa LSU. That's the ESPN era is the reason 96 is the Mm -hmm. line of delineation there. Um, But prior to that, 5.68 was UConn's title win over Oklahoma in 2022, a game that featured Sue Bird and Diana Diana Taurasi. So, 2 there for that. Turns out we like stars. Apparently, we, we like, like brackets and stars. Previous all-time record for any women's basketball game prior to last year was 8.1. Um, that's not right, though. I saw a, the Cheryl Miller game. Um, somebody said yesterday, and it was like Austin Carp or somebody that does the ratings, the 12.3 eclipsed a 40-year-ago game against, it was Kim Mulkey versus Cheryl Miller yeah, for, the title, Tech, for the title. Yeah, USC. For the title. Mm-hmm. And it was on CBS and drew like 11 or something. I watched that game. You're one of the 11 million. There you go. (laughs) But far fewer channels. Yes. Network TV versus ESPN. Yeah. A lot of reasons why that's not apples to apples. Not even close. In any way. (laughs) Not even. I mean, it's. I mean, Flipper drew a big number in the 60s because you had three channels. I was a pretty talented dolphin. Flipper or Lassie? Who you got? Flipper. Really? Yeah. You think Lassie's overrated? I mean, Lassie's a dog. All dogs are pretty cool for the most part. He saves Timmy every episode. I realize that. Every single episode. But you just go, hey, Lassie, come here. That's not what you do with Flipper. He's in the water. He's got to, like, hear his people needing him. And he's in the water. He, He can't get on land. He's not a land dolphin. That's a thought for Ole Miss. Just a thought. Um. He's got to help from the water people that are on the land. Incredible. Incredibly gifted dolphin. Yeah, okay, sorry. Um, I apologize to everybody, okay? <laughs> I'm sorry. I was really young even then when it was syndication. What was the premise of Flipper? Well, I don't know that. He what just, was it about? It was about... I know it's a dolphin, but otherwise... It was like a, the guy was like a park ranger or something, and he had two boys. And okay. Flipper was the a dolphin in the water that would always save the day. Save the day? How? Save from whom? The bad the bad guys. What would he do? He he would know that something was coming, and he would go. Is that true? Prevent it? Yeah, he, he's very talented. 
Ranger Porter Ricks is responsible for the animal and human life in Coral Key Park, Florida. There Stories center on his 15-year-old son, Sandy, and 10-year-old Bud, mm-hmm. and especially on their pet dolphin, Flipper. Okay, let's just pick an Who episode. says no? The highest rated ever is season two, episode five. Mm-hmm. Flipper is injured during explosions, and the doctor announces that Flipper may not live. Porter tries to get to the bottom of who set off that explosion and why, while the boys take vigil at Flipper's side, praying he pulls through. That is the highest rated Flipper of all time. You'd watch. I haven't heard him speak in years, but it, it, it's it's what stuck out to me when we started talking about this was that Jeff Foxworthy thing where he's talking about back in the day, you only had the three channels or whatever. And he mm-hmm. said, the nights the president were on, you were screwed. Yeah. And he's like yelling and he's going, ma, the president's on. I'm missing flipper. And he's like yelling because the yep. every network is going to yep. that. And, and that's you had no choice. Was. Yeah. You had no choice. Gerald Ford or Jimmy Carter was speaking and that was it. Porter Done. Ricks, the Ranger, the actor's name, is an active SEC head coach. Any idea? Shares a name with an active SEC head coach. Porter Ricks, the guy who played him, has the same name as an SEC head coach. Kirby Smart? I was only going to give you one guess because it's obviously it's not going to be Elijah Drinkwitz. Um, <laughs> it's Brian Kelly. Brian Kelly. That is correct. Yes. Did not know we were going down this uh, this rabbit hole at this point. Whatever happened to Aquaman? He, sorry, real quick. Brian Kelly's dad was the governor of Michigan from 43 to 47. The actor, not the football player. Sorry, go ahead. What were you saying? Oh, geez. Um, uh, I, I asked whatever happened to Aquaman. Um, I think it did really well at the box office. Vinny Chase and Entourage played him in season two. Um, otherwise, I have no idea. Yeah, I don't. That that's not. I'm not a comic book person at all. Like you're. I'm not either. You're losing me on that. So if that did twelve, it was LSU. Will one of the two games, assuming Iowa wins, break twelve? Yes. You think so? Mm-hmm. Friday night at eight, breaking twelve. It's dude, UConn, dude. It's true. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm watching. I mean, Chase, I'm she's big, man. Yeah. She's. I mean, I don't know what it is about her. People really like her, Caitlin Clark. There's something about her that appeals across the spectrum. Or they want her to lose. There's always those people. Yeah, sure. But for the most you part, have to have that. For the most part, there are people that just like her. She's an incredibly talented player. She shoots the ball from all over the place. She's she's different than what you're used to. She appears to be kind of this wholesome. There's almost a girl next door quality to her. Yet she sort of plays with an edge. She does. Her team is full of a bunch of girls that aren't great players, but they play really hard. There's middle America. Hell, I don't know what it is. I mean, I would be like trying to figure it out so we could bottle this and make it work. Because, yeah, the numbers would not be as high if she played for UConn. No. If she was just this supernova that played for UConn. Or if she played at Notre Dame and was surrounded by other great players, we'd go, oh, well, you know. Yeah. South Carolina wouldn't be captivating with Caitlin Clark. I don't know. South Carolina put, what, six players in the WNBA last year off their team? Mm -hmm. Everybody looks at them and goes, oh, it's a machine. Mm -hmm. Connecticut, it's a machine. They just win. Yeah. We got Alabama football tired. Alabama won again. Oh, okay. What do you want for dinner? There's something (laughs) about Caitlin, though, that you and me, man, we watched a – Iowa Nebraska regular season game on a Sunday. We did. At noon. It was on Fox, and I found myself tweeting about the good job Fox was doing with the broadcast. You did. And I wanted to make fun of you, except for the fact that I was sitting there watching the same damn thing. Yeah. I know. There's something about her 
And I don't know what it is, but yeah, I think they're going to blow rec- And if she wins on Friday, Carolina, play, Iowa, that Sunday number might, it might get an NFL type number. That really might get a number. Like 18. It'll beat the men's number, even on ESPN. 100%. Because men last year did 14. And they're going to be on TBS. That's true. No, the women's number. It, if Caitlin Clark is playing basketball on Sunday in an Iowa uniform, they are going to absolutely crush numbers. Yeah, I think they beat the men. UConn, NC State, or UConn. I mean, I'll ask in the stream. Be honest. Take your sarcasm out for just, just for a split second. For how many people is Friday night appointment viewing? And for how many people, if Sunday afternoon or Sunday night, if I was in the game, how many, for how many people is that appointment viewing? Meaning you're going to turn it to that channel at that time to watch that game. Not stumble across it. Yeah. yeah. It's appointment viewing. Yeah. And I'll make a poll on Twitter in a second. I mean, for how many, I mean, when, is there a game this weekend other than Iowa women that's appointment viewing for you? UConn, Bama's close. Okay. But no, not to the level, though. But close. I start to say other than Ole Miss baseball, which you get paid to watch. Yeah, that doesn't count. That doesn't count. No. Appointment viewing. Iowa, UConn's a 10. Alabama, sorry, yeah. Alabama, UConn is eight and a half. Yeah. Yeah. If I missed it, I wouldn't be crying myself to sleep, but I I do want to watch the game. Yeah. But it'll have to be good. Oh, you can't beat somebody by 25, and I'll turn it off with 10 minutes. Yeah, go. you'll be watching Food Network. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. So. All right. Podcast brought to you in part by Northeast Spark, N-E-S-P-A-R-C. Two packages, the Ignite, the 100 Mbps, or the Blaze. That is their one gig option. Your hometown team bringing you world-class broadband. That's nespark.com. 662-238-3159. Phone servers, portal controls, network security, wireless mesh extender, and much more. So call the office for details or get... It online again. That is nespark.com. Southern Traditions Farm is a 68 acre, 32 stall upscale equestrian training and boarding facility in Canton, Mississippi. Two sand rings, a grass ring, miles of wooded trails, a lot offered at Southern Traditions. Horseback riding offerings from beginner lessons to advanced to competing in nationally recognized competitions. It's also a great venue for corporate outings, uh, reunions big parties, whatever the case may be. So get in touch with them on Facebook or Instagram at Southern Traditions Farm. I'm going to try really hard to get a mailbag to you today. I'm way behind this week. I don't really understand why, but I am. It's presented by Art Hayes of Sotheby's International Realty. Are you thinking of making a move? Put the power of Sotheby's International Realty to work for you as a licensed agent with Sotheby's and a supporter of all things Ole Miss. Art can help you buy or sell in your hometown or anywhere in the world at no charge to you. Seriously. So call and ask Art how 612-805-5929 or email him at Arthur, A-R-T-H-U-R dot Hayes, H-A-Y-S at lakesmn.com. Creating a poll just quickly on uh, a Twitter for the uh, question of the day. Is Iowa women's basketball appointment viewing this weekend? Yes, no, only on Sunday. Fair. Yeah. That one that one worked yeah. that way. Okay. Let's do it that way. We'll see what some quick answers are there. In our uh in our last few minutes. Yeah, I was trying to find that eleven something number with Cheryl Miller and, and Kill Mulkey, but it's it's something something along those lines. I, I saw a thing on this and I didn't really I thought I'd kinda of probably say this for tomorrow, but we can do it today. I get why they are what they are, and I'm as casual as casual can be with an NBA knowledge or follow. Mavs have won seven in a row, mm-hmm. playing well. Real well. Dirk is potentially on a 35-10-9 pace. Luca. Luca, sorry, yeah. Why is he not getting MVP, Wilkes? Because it's already kind of done. He didn't do it. That's a flaw, right? It's a flaw. Because his stats are going to potentially be where we look back in several years and go, what the hell was that? Yeah. Um, a lot of it is his team didn't win enough the first two-thirds of the season for him to really get the recognition that he probably deserved. A lot of it is also Nikola Jokic is just amazing. And then Shea Gildas Alexander's had a phenomenal season. So there's just wasn't enough oxygen in the room for him to 
stay in the race. And once you're out, you're out. And there's kind so, of. And look, the league's never been better. So many great players. Just it's really hard to stand out. And Jokic is Jokic is an all-time great. People just don't want to give him the credit for it, but he is. He's an all-time great. Trouble is too strong, but the way people are not watching necessarily mm-hmm. for the common fan, is that league in trouble? And I'm using the wrong word. It's the wrong word, but yeah. Concerned. Sure. And I it's not translating. No, it's not. Well. It's a lot of stuff. It's a lot here. The average American is not watching. All right. Why are we watching Caitlin Clark and not watching the NBA? Is it because so many of the great players are foreign? Is it because the league is, for lack of a better word, woke? What is it? I don't know the answer. I watch a lot of NBA because the team that I like is really good and they're really fun. And I think they have one of the five best players in the world. And I think they have the most underrated player in the NBA on their team. And they're fun to watch. But I don't know why it doesn't resonate. The games are entertaining. Like the the Thunder Sixers last night was phenomenal. And that was with three of the big stars out. Tyrese Maxey didn't play for Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Shea didn't play. Jalen Williams didn't play. But Joel Embiid played. Chet Holmgren played. It was a fun game. Came down to the end. Sixers won. There's been a lot of really good games. The Lakers are playing well lately. LeBron is still LeBron. Luka's a magnificent player. And has Kyrie Irving on his team. Mm -hmm. The West playoffs are going to be just insane. And then in the East, Boston is probably the best team in in the league. And yet it's not a sure thing. They still got to get through Milwaukee. They potentially have to go through the Sixers. There's there's good teams in the East. I don't know why it doesn't resonate. I'm sure the playoff numbers will be better, but the playoffs numbers won't be what they probably should be. And the NBA has to figure out why that is. Why? Their playoff numbers are not beating March Madness numbers. They can't get the numbers that a women's basketball game gets. Yeah. What is it about? I mean, again, if I'm in the NBA offices, what is it about Caitlin Clark that people love so much? Mm-hmm. Yeah, just try to figure that out and then do that. What is it about them that people love so much? Yeah. And by the way, the Mavs had won seven in a row. They lost to Golden State last night yeah. in Golden State. Yeah. They don't, well, like, NBA, you have schedule losses. Yeah, whatever. Happens. Yeah. But, you know, why is that? I would I would be asking. And GJG makes a good point. Women's championship game is on ABC at 2 p.m. If I was in it, it breaks 20, and I agree. 20. Yes. There aren't many things that broke 20 last year. Mm-mm. Maybe like NFL. What's it? The championship game. Dude, or, what was it? A Monday night. On a Monday night, they got 12.6. Monday night. And that was LSU. It was. It was Caitlin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, you had the villain. Mm-hmm. Right or wrong. You had the villain. South Carolina would be a villain. They'd be a <laughs> death star. <laughs> Yo, you get David versus... But the average person couldn't name a player on Carolina's team. No, but they... Raven Johnson wouldn't no, compute. No. But big, bad South Carolina. Undefeated South Carolina. Got some rings. Mm-hmm. Undefeated. Coach, Coach kind of controversial. So you think they turn her into Darth Vader for the night? I would. <laughs> Iowa, you're wearing your gold uniforms. They're wearing all blacks. Yeah, hey, Caroline, I need you to put the black on tonight. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Iowa, you're in wider gold. Because I, now I get David versus Goliath a little bit. <laughs> I get all the storylines. <laughs> I get Cinderella. Some TV exec somewhere, if he's got to do NC State, UConn's going to go, oh, God. Oh, oh God. What a letdown. Can we play a third place game? I'm like, oh, God. What a letdown. No, I mean, we, everybody knows what we want. Yeah, now if it's Iowa, South Carolina. Sunday at 2 o'clock on ABC, yeah, 20. And at which point, that's where it's, it, you, you bring up a great point. That's where the NBA has to go, okay, what is it? I think I know the answer. Yeah, I'm looking at NBA numbers and going, they're bad relative to the product and the sport. They're not good. You know the answer. Everyone knows the answer. 
Someone wants to say it out loud. They're too woke. And it's, yeah, but it's beyond that. It's relatable. For whatever reason, it's not relatable. You don't care about a team. You don't care about a player. Frankly, it's what's interesting. Usually in sports, the you can't chaos just let of it, it be about the basketball. But even the off off stuff, even like the soap opera nature of the NBA and the moving teams it's, and all that. Your stuff, mom here is supposed to. I love you, but you're wrong. It's not because they don't play defense. If you watch Sixers Thunder last night, you know that defense won the game. It's not that. If if the NBA didn't play defense, the players are so freaking talented that every game would be 170 to 160. Scoring is down in the NBA. It's not that. I'm telling you, it's not that. That is that is wrong. It's I know what it is. The I've professional watched. wrestling nature of it doesn't translate in that sport, unlike it does in every other sport. Right. Because it's not relatable. Or whatever. But they do. They do all the stuff, Hispanic Month and Black History Month, and they do all the, the pride stuff, and, and people get tired of that. You want sports to be about sports. But the NFL number didn't fall off when they did it for a year. It was impenetrable, ratings-wise. Ratings. They went away from it afterwards. They did. They went away from it fast, Chase. They did. So something happened. Yeah, but it's still in the end zones. Still right there every time. But but on the end. Yeah, yeah, sure. It's not in your face. Mm-hmm. Maybe so. It just I, I I looked at it and went, Woo. Wow. Early poll results, very small numbers, but seventy six percent of the answers who said they will watch on at least Sunday and more than half said both nights. Yeah. Is where we're sitting right now. Again, I mean I I point out the people in my household who don't watch sports as appointment viewing. And in. They're in. Yeah, 100%. We'll talk to Jeffrey tomorrow. We will uh, have, again, a uh, watch-along for at least some of Arkansas and Ole Miss on Thursday night, a hand-raised edition for that. I don't even know the start time of the game. I guess we should find that to tell people. But whenever that is, we'll be on for the first pitch. Hagen Smith will throw that to probably Ethan Groff at some time on uh, Thursday evening there from uh, Baumwalker Stadium in Fayetteville. And then uh, they'll continue the series on Friday and Saturday. Ole Miss back home next Tuesday against Murray State in the uh, the next home game there for the Rebels. Against, I think the Racers now. I think Murray State finally removed the Thoroughbreds as their mascot for some sports, but not all sports. No, I think Ole Miss has problems. They they're could. They, they're just the racers now. I think they're just the racers now. Yeah, I asked somebody this yesterday. I, I think they're just the racers now. So anyway, all right, rebelgrub.com. In the meantime, talk to you again tomorrow.